Within the perimeter of the Angkor Archaeological Park, situated inside the province of Simriap, the East Maibon Temple, also known as the Prasat Maibon Kangkat in Khmer, is an ancient site which has attracted a great deal of tourists. As it is integrated into the larger tourism circuit, this temple, constructed on land, with the shape of a square at an area of one hectare, was actually a Hindu monastery. The site was the brainchild of King Rajendra Varman II, and it was built during the year of 952 AD as a dedication to his ancestral lineage. Based on the documentation composed by researchers, the main deity that exhibits within this temple is the Shiva Lingam. Furthermore, this ancient temple has its place surrounded by the East Barai ancient water reservoir. To act as a reminder, this East Barai measured at 7 kilometers in length and almost 2 kilometers wide was turned into a reality through the vision of King Yaso Varman as the 9th century came close to an end. By comparing the elevation of the temple's bottom layer and the nearby rice fields around the area of this East Barai, some researchers estimated that during the early days, the water within this reservoir might have clocked at a depth of between 2 to 3.5 meters. Through this estimate, it is thought that to get to and from the temple, visitors had to travel by boats. However, seeing a temple in the middle of a reservoir must have sparked observers' curiosity. So, why did people have this kind of idea and intention hundreds of years ago? During the Angkor period, which ruled this very land from the 9th up until the 15th century AD, Ancient Khmer Hindu followers often stood firmly on the religious ideology of water and mountain, in which these two crucial elements respectively represent the ocean and Kailas mountain. Similar design can also be seen as many other temples have moat ducked around them. In this architectural mindset, the reservoir itself can already be considered to be a large moat. The East Maybon Temple was composed of bricks, limestones, and laterite stones as its construction materials. This temple design is considered to be very intriguing. Beyond the five towers that were erected in a crisscross manner, long rectangular structures were also seen constructed surrounding the center structure, accommodated by other subordinated towers made from laterite stones and bricks. When climbing up to the first level, we can see sculptures of elephants standing at the corners of the intercardinal directions. Some other documentations express that the brick part of the temples was also covered in motor to form the surface. On the wall surface, we can see holes inside of them. These holes are thought to allow the mora to stick to one another more efficiently. When speaking of the stone quality, which can be seen on the pillars, the false doors, and the door frames, many researchers were amazed at how skillful these ancient architects and engineers were in choosing the best stone. Despite its endurance, across centuries of multiple social changes, the stone which make up these ancient structures remain relatively intact, without much corrosion with the outside atmosphere. The stone seems to be new as if they were freshly cut and grinded out of the construction site. Speaking of the sculptures, their shapes on this particular temple seems to be a bit bigger than usual. Yet they demonstrate a remarkable depth into the wall surface. The attractiveness does not fall too far from those famously exhibited at the temple of Bandesrai. If visitors could invest a bit more time, 
into observing the designs and the sculptures on the four stores as well as the lintels on every tower. Regardless of their size, one could clearly see that every sculpture says something very unique that is different from one another.